What's going on, guys? So you know we love the big tentpole box office behemoths. We talk about them all the time. But today, we're going to take it down a notch. And we're going to talk about some hidden gems, maybe some movies that you've heard of, maybe some movies that you've actually seen. Great. But stuff that's a little bit off the beaten path with another episode of the best movies that you've never seen. And we've got a couple of great film lovers here. First, she's a great friend of the show. You've seen her all over Screen Junkies and she's a host on Filmstruck, Alicia Malone. Hello, thanks for having me. This guy, oh, he's a good friend. He's a super funny stand-up comedian and an actor. You could see him on the new Twin Peaks and he's got a recurring part on Better Call Saul, Josh Fadum. Hi, hi, hi. We're a bunch of big movie lovers and we're <laughs> gonna talk about some of our favorite films. So Alicia, uh, talk to us about one of the films. Well, I'm going to start with one that you can see right now. It's on video on demand. It's called Raw, or how do you say it in American accent? R Raw. Raw. Yeah. It's a French film by director Julie Ducano. It's her directorial debut, and it's super impressive. It's a cannibal coming-of-age story, <laughs> a girl coming into her own power, a girl discovering herself sexually at college. Wow. So she goes to study to be a veterinarian. She has to go through this rite of passage, a uh, kind of hazing ritual at college involving eating rabbits. So she gets a taste for meat, and then she gets a taste for human meat. But it's also gotcha. about female relationships and sibling rivalry. So much going on there. So I highly recommend checking out Raw. Awesome. Thanks, Alicia. Josh, <laughs> uh, talk to us about one of the films you like. The film Belly, directed by Hype Williams from mm -hmm. the late 90s. I think it is um, visually amazing. And it's shot by cinematographer Malik Saeed, okay, who was. was Spike Lee's cinematographer oh, wow. for years. It stars uh, Nas and DMX yeah. and Method Man and Terrell Hicks. Well, and Method Man, a friend of Screen Junkies. You recognized me. You Absolutely. As soon as I saw him, I was like, the guy from Screen Junkies. Yes, I am a subscriber. Wu-Tang for life. Wu-Tang for life. <laughs> yeah. Next time Method Man comes, you gotta ask him about Belly. Yeah. If you wanna be sold on Belly, just watch the opening where, they're, where they remix Soul to Soul to this violent robbery, and then it kicks into a kind of a good fellas -y narration. All right, a, a movie that I really like from 2008 from the directors uh, Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck, who are directing the upcoming Captain Marvel uh, with Brie Larson. Sugar is this film that tells a really intimate story about this minor league baseball player in the Dominican Republic, and it kind of lays out how the Dominican Republic is this hotbed of baseball. And in order to get off the island and like improve their lives, it's so competitive to be scouted by major league scouts. It's weird cause it's like, I don't really follow baseball. I like mm -hmm. to go to a game or whatever, but I really like a good baseball movie. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah I like a it's good such... sport movie and yeah. I never follow sports at all. Yeah, yeah likewise. There's, there's like an inherent good, like, stakes there. Underdog stories are great. It's a cinematic world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, just take it from Kevin Costner, am I right? <laughs> the guy can't stop making these Yeah. Right, that's right. <laughs> Put um, the mat but, down, Kevin. Yeah, right? But Sugar, much smaller film and uh, just... It's such a beautiful journey this guy goes on, and I really connected with it. Uh, so, yeah, check it out. Alicia, let's hear about another film you like. All right, another coming-of-age story that I really like is called The Fits. It's a directorial debut by Anna Rose Holmer, and mm -hmm. her first film, but it's really impressive, and I can't wait to see more from her. This 11-year-old girl, she's a tomboy. She boxes with her brother, but she watches the dancers, and she wants to be part of this dancing troupe. And so she does, but then the movie takes a really interesting turn and each of the members of the dance troupe start suffering from these seizures, these fits, uh -huh. where they, they levitate off the ground and it becomes very surreal. And so you can read into that as much as you like or you can just watch how beautiful the story is. But I love the fact that, you know, indie movies can do these very simple premises but then... To do a twist on it and make it something different. And The Fits is one that really stuck with me. I would like to check that out now. I haven't seen it. Okay. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> uh, Josh, what's another movie you like? Uh, Alison Anders' film, Mi Vida Loca. Yeah. It's an L.A. set movie, which is mm -hmm. great, yeah. in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And it's about two girls who find out that they were both seeing the same guy mm -hmm. and they're both pregnant with his child and he gets murdered. 
So they hate each other, and then they have to sort of forge a bond, you know? Yeah. That's what Alison Anders always did really well. She did these 90s indie films showing people that you didn't see on screen, like yeah. Gas Food Lodging, all about yes. a single mother. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and she was such a vital part of especially the L.A. 90s indie yeah. scene. And the next one I'm going to throw out there, this is a 1982 film from great director Sidney Lumet. I feel like... On his filmography, this gets a little bit overlooked. A film called The Verdict. I think it's Paul Newman's greatest performance. Okay. He plays basically this alcoholic, down on his luck lawyer, such an anti hero, very, not even an anti hero, just an unlikable guy who tries to uh, resurrect his life. And he takes on this case that no one wants, and he's going to uh, take to trial this malpractice suit that no one, no one thinks he can win. And it's like, will he redeem himself? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Alicia, lay another one on us. There was a great Swedish film called Force Majeure that came out in 2014. It's by director Ruben Osland, who just won the major prize at the Cannes Film Festival with The Square, which is a movie I love. But this one is such an interesting dark comedy. It's about a family who goes on a skiing holiday there's an avalanche and they each react to this emergency in different ways. Uh -huh. I won't give anything away, yeah. but it's unexpected. And then you have to deal with the repercussions of that. So it makes you think, what would you do in a situation where you have to choose between saving your family, saving strangers, or just saving yourself? I don't know what I'd do. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's great. Really cool. funny. Uh, Josh? Um, I wanted to uh, recommend, if you haven't seen it, uh, Alejandro Hodorowski's Dance of Reality, which came out in, I think, 2014. It's first about the story of a little boy, and then it turns into the story about the boy's dad. It's just some amazing surrealist stuff in there. His mother, every piece of her dialogue is spoken in opera. So, wow. so it's hilarious at first because it's so weird, and then yeah. as the movie goes on, you just get used to it. Yeah. That's just like how he remembers That's his crazy. mother. Is that yeah. <laughs> You know, like that she was an operatic type woman. She's yeah. this big buxom woman. So it's just got a weird ethereal like feel to it. Very cool. Yeah. Josh, thanks for the recommendation. You got it. Um, I'll throw another one out there. This isn't like a super obscure film. Probably a lot of you have seen it. But if you haven't seen it, you must. This is 1979's The Jerk. Um, classic. Yeah. Absolute classic. One of my favorite. If you favorite... haven't seen it, what are you doing? Yeah, how are you living <laughs> your <in> life? <laughs> Screw all these other ones that we talked about. Get right there. Oh, yeah. That is like day one. He hates these cans! Stay away from the cans! One of the great comedies of all time. The world of this uh, man-child and his journey, Steve Martin, the idiocy that he captures is brilliant. One of the things that works so well about the jerk is yeah. that he's an idiot but he doesn't know it. He thinks he's yes. smart. Yes. He mm -hmm. thinks he's playing smart. I defy you to see the jerk and A, not laugh, and B, not start singing the thermos song after <laughs> you hear it. You must see the jerk. Please talk to us, Alicia. I love the jerk. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go with one that I've spoken about many times. It's A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night mm, mm, by mm, mm. Anna Lily Amirpour. Uh, it's an Iranian Western vampire movie. Uh -huh. It's so unique, it's really original, all shot in black and white, but it has uh, you know, obvious homages to Quentin Tarantino and Dario Argento but at the same time feels like her own unique style. She has another movie coming out this year called The Bad Batch, which is a cannibal film. I love, <laughs> I love my cannibal movies. Yes. Um, but before you see that, you should see A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. It's great. Excellent. Thank you, Alicia. Josh? There's a film called Blue Sunshine. came out in the 70s. In Los Angeles, there's a series of murders of going on uh, happening by people who kind of turn into maniacs and they lose their hair. And what it turns out is that all these people experimented with a particular strand of LSD in the hippie era, and uh -huh. now it's coming back to haunt them, uh -oh. and they're turning into maniacs and killing people. Blue Sunshine <laughs> was great. the name of the uh, drug that oh, they were doing. Yeah. It's pretty so fun. interesting. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen that one. It's that fun, and cool. it's crazy looking visually instructive by Jeff Lieberman who made some pretty good you know, horror movies. Okay, I'll throw one out there. I saw this movie in college and it kind of blew my mind. Down by Law. Mm -hmm. It's a black and white film. Uh, Tom Waits, John Lurie, uh, Roberto Benigni. It's a fun, stupid story about three guys who like shouldn't be hanging out together. Yeah. 
they get stuck in prison and then they break out of prison and they're on the run. So it's a little bit of a kooky slapstick journey, but it's also just so subtle and um, epitomizes cool with so many of its scenes and the dialogue and the way New Orleans is shot in the mm -hmm. bayou. It's a beautiful little film and yeah. it's super badass. Mm. Great pick. Well, thanks, Alicia. Um, I'm going to go with one that's just really fun and easy to watch. It's called The One I Love, mm -hmm. directed by Charlie McDowell. And it shows how, how you can do a sci-fi premise really simply in an indie film with very few cast members and very few locations. It stars uh, Elizabeth Moss and Mark Duplass, and they play a couple whose therapist suggests that they go to a house for the weekend because they're having troubles in their marriage. And I won't say what happens when they go to this house, but basically they each find their ideal partner. Mm -hmm. But it's not in a way that you expect. It's it's just a really fun, easy, intriguing watch and the kind of movie that you want to talk about with your friends. Yeah, afterwards. it takes a bit of a wild turn, yeah, right? Absolutely. No spoilers. Yeah. The one I love. Great. Josh? I would like to suggest Buster Keaton's The Cameraman. Mm -hmm which is uh, one of my favorite Buster Keaton films. Mm -hmm. And what I'll say about it, it's uh, his penultimate silent. He made it under contract with MGM, so he couldn't do things in the process that he usually does. He couldn't do all the crazy set pieces. He couldn't workshop them on set, so he had to have it all scripted out. So there's actually very little set pieces, but he's just so fantastic. And, and it's yeah. very slick and beautiful looking because they had that... MGM studio budget. His physical comedy and the stuff he was able to do without saying a word, I mean, mm -hmm. it's incredible. And he has such an influence on so many comedians. Yeah, the way that he brings his emotions into it, the way he just brings it with his, you know, with his body and his face. Very cool. And the movie's got a lot of heart. I'll say that. The movie has a lot of heart. It's very sweet. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've got one more film that I really like. I saw this when I was a kid. I was like, whoa, this is an awesome action adventure. Talking about Capricorn One, a great adventure. So much fun. James Brolin, Josh Brolin's dad, yeah, and Elliot Gould, classic 70s actors. Fun fact that the film features O.J. Simpson, uh, among other people. It's about the faking of the landing on Mars, okay? So for you conspiracy theorists, it's right up your alley, man. And um, <laughs> so the government has a Mars mission. They fake it, but then they can't let the secret that they faked it ever get out. And they have to kill the astronauts who are in this soundstage filming it. And they escape, and man, what a rollicking journey. Check it out if you can find it. Alicia, Josh, this is super fun. Thank you for these suggestions, and I want to thank you for watching. So, what are some undiscovered, little-known gems that you love that you feel like, oh, people need to be turned on to these? And which of our movies have you seen, or what do you look forward to seeing? Let us know in the comments below. We want to know. Uh, again, guys, thank you for hanging out and talking movies with us. Thanks again for watching. I'm Hal Rudnick. Hit me up on Twitter. Bye-bye. Thanks, Hal. Yay! <laughs> Yay!